This is the specific heat. Specific heat. C is a specific heat. And it has units of, in metric, it's calories per gram per Celsius degree. How much energy? And calories is a measure of energy. How much energy does it take to raise a gram of material one Celsius degree? In English units, it's BTUs, British Thermal Units, which is another form of energy, per pound per Fahrenheit degree. Okay, so there's an, a different, since this is per weight, there's a little bit different formula for uh, thermal energy in English units. Okay, so it's mass times specific heat, and of course times the temperature difference. All right, and the units will wind up being calories for this one. If I'm doing it in English units, let's just take it as the weight of the object instead of the mass times the specific heat times the temperature difference, and you'll wind up with BTUs, British Thermal Units. These things are defined, I mean, you know, it's all just energy. It's all joules and foot-pounds and calories and BTUs. They're all just units of energy. But uh, at the time they were created, people didn't understand that it was all the same thing. A calorie is defined as a, um, let's see, the amount it takes to raise one gram of water, one Celsius degree, at around, I think, something like four Celsius, four degrees Celsius. So that's the definition of a calorie. So the specific heat of water is one, one calorie. It takes one calorie to raise one gram of water, one Celsius degree. The definition of the British thermal unit is the amount of amount of energy it takes to raise one pound of water, one Fahrenheit degree, eh, something like between 59 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, it's defined by water, and so uh, the specific heat in English units for water is uh, one BTU per, per pound per Fahrenheit degree. The nice thing about that is that means that although the units are different, the numbers for every material are the same since they're all correlated to water. Now, it takes, for like iron, you can look up specific heats. If you look up the specific heats, you'll find that uh, it takes about ten times as much energy to raise, uh, to raise a gram of water by one Celsius degree as it does, for example, iron. Iron's got uh, a specific heat of like .115 or something because water can store energy in other ways, more ways that don't show up as temperature. Water's got more of these like little Swiss bank accounts that it can store the energy in that you just can't see. If you go down to the water on a hot day on the beach in the summer, the sand feels really hot because the silicon in the sand has got a much lower specific heat. Uh, when it absorbs the same amount of energy as the water, it causes a bigger increase in temperature. Uh, the water feels cool, but at night when you go out, that same day, uh, they lost the same amount of heat, but it, it provided a much bigger temperature loss for the sand. So the so the sand is much cooler, and the water feels warm. The reason the Pacific Northwest has such moderate temperatures is because it gets its air from over the water. That moderates the temperature much better. So let's see, let's do, uh, let's do some examples. I'll do a metric example, and I'll do an English example. Hmm. Let's see. Let's take a container of water. Now don't get thrown off because the specific heat's so easy because it's one for water. You still need to use the units and everything. And let's say I take uh, um, 40 grams of water and I raise it from an uh, initial temperature, T sub I, of 20 degrees Celsius to a final temperature, T sub F, of 70 degrees Celsius. And, uh, and it's H2O, so the specific heat of water I remind you, is one calorie per gram. It takes one calorie of energy to raise a gram of water one Celsius degree. All right. 
And I want to know how much heat is absorbed. So let's try that. Let's see. Thermal energy is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the temperature difference. I don't have the temperature difference, so I need to calculate that. Remember, when you're writing your, when you're writing your five step, you've got a picture. You list all the knowns and unknowns, variable value unit. You don't do any calculations there. You just put everything together you need to work with, and then you do the calculations. So the temperature difference is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. There's my working equation, which is 70 degrees Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius, which would be 50 Celsius degrees. Now I've got everything I need. I've got 40 grams of mass. Specific heat of water is one calorie per gram per Celsius degree. And the temperature difference is 50 Celsius degrees. Uh, check it out. I've got, uh, let's see, Celsius degrees cancel. Grams cancel. I wind up with units of energy, calories. And that gives me 2,000 2, calories. So go ahead and check that out. You know, if you look at the whole uh, problem, you can pause it if you want and work through it. And we'll do an English example. Okay, so let's, let's work on the English example. Take a block of, uh, of iron. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, this is iron. I think the specific heat of iron is about, uh, I'll call it Fe because that's the symbol for iron. I think it's 0 0.115 British thermal units per pound per Fahrenheit degree. And let's say I've got 10 pounds. My weight is 10 pounds. I got 10 pounds of iron. And I'm going to raise it from an initial temperature of uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit to a final temperature of, uh, well, let's see, 270 degrees Fahrenheit. And I want to know how much thermal energy was absorbed by that block of iron. Let's see. You know, again, I'm going to have to calculate delta T. So I'll do that. Temperature difference. So the temperature difference, delta T, is equal to the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature, which is going to be 270 degrees Fahrenheit minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit which gives me 200. That's a temperature difference, so it's Fahrenheit degrees. And the thermal energy absorbed by this is going to be the weight, because it's English units, times the specific heat of iron, times the temperature difference, which is 10 pounds times 0 0.115 British thermal units per pound per Fahrenheit degree times the temperature difference of 200 Fahrenheit degrees. The Fahrenheit degrees cancel and the pounds cancel. And I'm going to wind up with, uh, let's see, 230. British thermal units. 230 BTUs go into that. All right. Now, now that's pretty good. That's thermal energy. 